Uh, you will have opportunity to ask questions during each presentation, so feel free to ask questions during the presentation or after each presentation. And also each session will be followed by a little activity, uh, workshop activity. Um, our first presenter today, Professor Denise Dallarosa, is a professor of German in the Department of German and Russian Languages and Literature. Um, she, uh, her research interest is in 19th century German women's writing, and within this line of research, um, she's interested in pursuing the process by which women develop a literary consciousness. Today, Professor De La Rosa will introduce you to her process approach, as the title here shows, to teaching writing in the front of which classroom. Um, the second presenter, Professor Patrick Viverito, over here in the blue shirt, um, teaches Italian in the Department of Roman Languages and Literature here in Notre Dame. Um, Professor Viverito's interests include, include front language assessment and writing. Um, he pursues his interest in the Roman Language and Literature Writing Center Committee, which he chairs. Today, Professor Viverito will present the curricular implications of the 2009-2010 Writing Assessment Project of his department, the Department of Roman Languages. And our last presenter um, is Professor Rabab El Nadi. She's teaching today until 3:30, and but she kindly accepted to be here as we. All of you know it's not always easy to find a time that works for everybody, so she will come as soon as she's done. But in the meanwhile, I still definitely want to introduce her. Um, um, so Professor Robada Nadi uh, teaches Arabic in the classic department. She's a native Arabic speaker from Egypt. Um, in addition to her college teaching experience, she has experience in teaching at the K-12 level. Um, as the talk will reflect today, she is interested in using technology and media in the front of her classroom to facilitate writing. But in the meantime, uh, please help me welcome um, Professor Dennis Dallarosa. Um, thank you all for um, coming on this beautiful Friday afternoon. I know that was a sacrifice. Um, and thanks to Virginie once again for putting together um, this workshop, workshop series. And we really need to thank Virginie because it is her birthday today. So she has given up her afternoon as well. So happy birthday. Herzlichen Glückwunsch, as we say in German. So. Okay, so um, I'm here to talk about teaching writing as a process. I'm not so sure um, that I'm talking about everything that I do in my classroom. Um, I'm here to present theory. And we all know that theory and practice don't always um, come together um, the way the literature says it should, okay? Um, and our activity today will be actually to talk about that exact um, situation. I refuse to use the word problem, okay? So, so um, first I want to talk about the focus of instruction, particularly when it comes to writing instruction. Um, what the research shows is that in beginning and intermediate levels, listening and speaking tend to be emphasized. And I bet all of us would agree um, with that, those of us particularly in the lower levels. Writing or composition then is reserved for advanced level grammar, literature, or civilization courses. Ultimately then, as a result, instructors in advanced courses are frequently dismayed at the lack of quality of students' writing wondering how did we get here, um, what's not happening, um, what could be happening, and, but that does not mean that our advanced level grammar, lit, and civ courses are doing it right either. Oh, and as we say, please interrupt me at any point. So I'm here to talk about the process approach to writing, which does come out of um, primarily English writing, um, L1 uh, here in the United States, it's uh, really um, hit after the 70s. And, I, and we're not here um, actually to, to critique um, writing as a process, say, in the L1, but I want to give you a little bit of background about it and how it can or cannot be applied to the L2. Also very interesting is that the best work and research is being done in L1 Next, pretty good stuff going on in ESL, hardly anything going on in foreign language um, uh, L2. So anybody looking for a great PhD topic, this is it. Okay. 
So L1, according to L1 composition instruction, they are there to, um, to um, approach the conventions of writing as a whole, first. Second, the form and discourse modes are addressed. And finally, what's most important for us today is that it does not ignore the highly individualized cognitive processes of write writers. Now, for many of us who come out of um, traditional um, PhD programs, traditional MA programs, we don't do a lot with um, cognitive pedagogy. So I don't want us to get hung up in that. But most important is right here, that the writing process is the final product. For many of us, we go from assignment to product, and nothing in between. We as instructors often are not there during the process, or we're there for one step of the process. Okay? So this is where we are most um, interested today. And then finally, students and teachers work together collaboratively to make meaning. And that's also very important, helping the student to make meaning out of what they are doing. It isn't just um, about the issue that you want them to write about. Okay? So that's in, I probably did that in 45 seconds, um, the writing process in um, the L1. So we need to talk about L2 versus L1. And the biggest difference, of course, and we all know this, um, we don't need research to tell us, but the mastery of the language of expression. Our students do not have the same mastery as a native speaker does. In L2, students' command of language plays then a critical role, and that's where we end up concentrating here. Mechanics, word choice, grammar, and syntax. And those are, and I don't know how many of you actually teach um, USEM, right? Um, for those of us who teach USEM, our discipline, but in English, I don't have to spend that much time on mechanics, word choice, grammar, and syntax. I spend some, but certainly not to the extent that we have to in our foreign language classrooms. And ultimately, our goal is always the development of the L2. So through the writing process, you can still concentrate on development of your L2. Okay. Questions so far? All right. All right. So this is where we talk about the process. So I want to talk about the process of the process approach. What does that mean? What is it? This, again, comes out of the L1, but we can use this. These are, are the five major steps. New ideas, we start there. What does that mean? I have my students write what I call an idea sheet. Just the idea. It doesn't have to be any more than that. Sentence or two. To a plan. How are they going to plan out what they are writing? This is all done in the L2. A draft. First draft, of course. Then, after getting back my feedback, the instructors read feedback, they revise and then they edit. But keep in mind that revision and editing are not the same thing. Also, interesting enough, what, our, what the minimal research in the FL does show us is this is where things fall apart, right here. That the students end up concentrating so much on mechanics, grammar, and word choice that often the second draft, structurally and from content, isn't that much different. And I'm sure we've all experienced that um, in our own classrooms. Um, you'll notice I have step three um, bolded and highlighted because this is where it is the most important, um, I guess I would say, step of the process. Number one, do not expect that your first draft is error free. That's number one, it's a draft. For any of us who have worked on our own theses, our own master's degrees, our dissertations, article publication. When was the last time you got something either accepted or published on its first draft? Right? We shouldn't expect that of our students um, either, certainly not in the second language. Teacher feedback helps students discover new ideas, words, and sentence structure. 
This goes back to the concentration on the development of the L1. 